Hi everyone, my name is Sonia Newcomb. Uh, Ryan asked me to make a video for you guys and uh, talk a little bit about my experience. So I'm going to introduce myself first and then we'll cover a couple topics. Um, I played at the University of Oregon and then I have played for 10 years professionally and I'm headed for my 11th season to Mega Box um, Italy in a Series A1. I've played in 14 different countries and I've played um, with Team USA for four summers. So I've had uh, quite a bit of experience kind of traveling all over the place. I've played in Russia and China, Azerbaijan, Italy, Brazil, Romania, uh, Germany, France, and Turkey. My last club that I just played for was Exazbashi in Istanbul, Turkey in March of 2020 before the pandemic hit and uh, didn't end up playing Decided not to play last year, uh, but yeah, to get to play one more year. So uh, the three th topics that Ryan asked me to cover was uh, how do I decide between offers in the upcoming season? What are some of the things that I do to prep for uh, trainings and for the upcoming seasons? And then how do I stay healthy in mind, body, and soul? So I'll try to give you guys a couple of things that uh, I've learned over the years and how things have evolved from my first year to the very last. All right, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is how uh, to decide on an offer for the next season. So um, I've also made some notes. So if I look down at my lap, that's what I'm doing to just make sure that I get everything that I wrote down. So I think the first thing when you're deciding on an offer for the upcoming season is to evaluate how the previous season went and then to make some goals moving forward. So kind of in my process, I make daily goals, yearly or season goals, and then I made career goals. And so that was really important to me to have small goals, medium goals, and then big goals. Um, so that was, that was the first part that I did. And I usually wrote them down. I shared them with people and um, those in my circle that were important to me and I made them known. Um, that piece leads into, I think it's really important to have great communication, uh, with your, especially with your agent, um, on things that you're looking for, um, in a team. So things that I looked for, um, as my career progressed was I really looked for an experienced coach. That was really important to me. That was, um, I really wanted to work with someone that was going to help me improve as a person and as a player. Um, so that was really important. Another one was if I got to play with some reputable players, that was, that got a little bit easier, the older that I got and the longer that I had been, uh, playing professionally was that I recognized more players, um, names and, um, had gotten to really respect their careers and wanted to learn from them and play with them and, um, just get to have those experiences. Another thing I looked for, uh, was always playing time. And that was really important to me since I was gonna go overseas and be away from my family and um, just take this time away, I wanted to make sure that I had a concrete um, position on the team. I wasn't afraid to compete for playing time, but especially as a foreigner with restrictions and rules um, and all those kinds of things, I wanted to make sure that my role was gonna be substantial in the team. I felt like that was gonna be the most valuable for me, that I was gonna grow the most um, if I could really contribute on, on the court. Uh, the other thing was, was it going to be a salary bump? So this is, there's a little asterisk with this one because just making more money doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right uh, career path or the right um, job to choose next. Uh, for me, it made me feel like you were more valued as a player. You were getting more experience and people were getting to know you more. So there, that's a little bit tricky because that was important on one hand, but it definitely wasn't the sole factor in deciding. So once I had reviewed the season from before and kind of figured out what I wanted to look for in the season moving forward, I tried to have really clear communication with my agent. Um, that was something early on in my career that I was not very good at. And I feel like I was stalled for a couple of years because offers would come through and I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to take them right away and my agent would get frustrated. Why are you not taking this? I feel like this is great for you. And we hadn't really gotten on the same page. Um, 
So I think that that takes practice depending on what kind of relationship you have with your agent, if you make phone calls or if you communicate mostly by text or emails or you know what that communication really looks like, but it's so important to be on the same page. One of my, um, in my third year, I had talked to my agent and I said, you know, look, I'm really looking to make a jump in league playing level. I had been in France and really low level Turkey and then I was in Germany and had a really good year. Um, I had really excelled with the team and the team had a good year and I felt like I was ready to, you know, try something new and go to a different team. And that agent said, I don't see you excelling outside of German league. And so that was really tough for me because that was definitely not the trajectory that I had seen my career going. Um, I felt like I had played really well and that I was ready to tackle something different. So, um, yeah, that was a that was kind of the sticking point for me that I realized that I had to be a better communicator and uh, why are, why am I going to this team? What am I what am I doing in this team that's going to make me better and how is it going to propel me forward um, throughout my career? Let's see. The other thing I have is to make sure that you're honest with yourself about what you want from the experience. So. When I talk to young girls that are gonna go play professionally, um, one of the mentors that talked to me before I went to go play uh, was, he said, be honest about, do you want this to be a great living experience? Do you want it to be a great playing experience? Do you want a combination of the both? Or do you wanna play at the highest level no matter what? And that last one really resonated with me. I really wanted to play at the highest level that I possibly could. I felt like after college that I still had more untapped potential and I still had that um, real drive to grind and to get better. So I think that's important after each season to reevaluate, you know, have your goals changed? Do you need more out of where you're living or do you want to learn more about a culture or are you interested in playing for this type of a style of volleyball? Um, so those are things that you can kind of prep yourself before offers start coming in and before you have to start making decisions. So when those decisions come in, or when the offers come in, um, I think you have to really weigh weigh uh, all the factors. So my husband traveled with me uh, for 10 years and um, it was really great that I was able to have him by my side and uh, we could really work through it together. But uh, I always made a pros and cons list that was um, just an old fashioned, like what's, is it achieving what I want to achieve in the next year or is it not going to help me achieve that? And so that was really valuable to me to write it down physically that I could look at it and uh, really reevaluate it um, based on what I was trying to achieve for the next year. Because if you react on the offers when they come, they often come with short, short deadlines. You have to make a decision really quickly. And a lot of times that emotion for me um, was the tricky part. I didn't want to have that emotion of, oh, I'm not ready to make this decision or it has to be made in 24 hours. So if I could take a step back and I could um, go back and look at my lists, then I felt like that was really helpful for that. So that is, uh, I think, my advice about, yeah, when you're deciding for offers for next season. Next, we're going to talk about how I prep myself for trainings and for the upcoming season as well. So first I'll talk about trainings and just kind of how I would break down a day um, before going to practice. So uh, the first thing that I do when I get overseas is really just trying to try and create a daily routine or a daily schedule for myself. So I found over the years that I do better if I have a schedule built into my day and I'm not just dependent on the volleyball practices that I'm going to be going to or the team functions. Um, it helps if I uh, get up at the same time, if I can do some journaling and some quiet time in the morning and then go to morning practice, come back, make some lunch, do some recovery. Um, items, whether that's Normatec, ice, take a nap, um, whatever that looks like, 
So, and then I make sure that I'm fueled for the evening practice and uh, make sure that I have a plan for when I'm going to bed. Uh, I always try to build in some fun times and some things that are rejuvenating for myself, going to a cafe, um, spending some time reading, connecting with friends and family back home. That can be built in uh, throughout the daily schedule, but I've just really found that that has all helped prep me to be ready for the trainings during the day. So specifically uh, for trainings, I make sure that I really fuel myself with food and make sure that I have sufficient sleep and that I'm really hydrated. I found that um, emotionally I get much more depleted if I'm not really taking care of myself physically. And the older you get and the longer that you play, that takes a lot more time outside of trainings rather than just in the trainings. So um, building in that schedule has really helped me. One of my favorite stories uh, was when I was playing for the national team and we had a, he called himself a sleep doctor. It was a doctor that worked for NASA and he came in and talked about that if you can get eight hours of sleep in a night that you banked one good night of sleep. And if you really cheat yourself out of a good night of sleep, say you get four or five hours, something like that, then you're essentially taking a withdrawal from that sleep bank. And so good nights of sleep, you're banking. So you're banking and banking and building them up. And then if you have restless nights of sleep or you're not prioritizing your sleep, then you're just taking withdrawals constantly. And so uh, the really interesting concept to me was that you had to sleep eight hours plus more in order to bank your good night of sleep and more sleep. Um, so I'd never had anybody explain it to me that way. And I thought, oh, that makes so much more sense that, you know, one, one good night of sleep doesn't necessarily uh, make your battery, re totally recharge your batteries or make your sleep bank full. So that's super important. Um, another thing uh, is to take time for yourself. So I made a little list of some things that I like to do. So journal, go to a cafe. Uh, go outside and take a walk, get to know your, where you're staying and try to meet a teammate for coffee, uh, take a nap or find something creative to do to really recharge your batteries in between practices. Um, that has become more important to me too because the first several years I didn't have that routine or didn't have those other interests going on and um, I felt it quite depressing to just be dependent on the volleyball schedule of, of what was going on on the daily basis that um, I felt like it was really important that your value is not only in um, those practices. If you have bad practice, then your whole day isn't ruined if you have all these other things uh, going on. Uh, the other, so I guess the next part is how do I get ready for a season? So this kind of builds off of reviewing the season past and setting goals for the season ahead of time. So one of the things, um, let me look at my notes here for a second. It, it's evolved the older that I've got. So I've tried to learn um, from each season and from each uh, off season and tried to keep good notes. And um, I keep my binder of all my weightlifting sheets and all of my recovery tools are in one place. And so I've tried to just accumulate kind of this, um, treasure chest, I would say, of items that have helped me get better over the years. So for a season, usually um, I take two to three weeks off, make sure that I heal all my nagging injuries and uh, just really take care of myself. And then I'll start prepping for the next season, whether I have a contract or not. Um, I usually make sure that I train year round so that it's not as difficult to get back into full playing shape. Um, in the off season, I've really focused on making myself more durable. So one of the biggest changes from playing in college to playing overseas is that you're going from a three month uh, power season to a very long season. You're going to eight month, a full eight month season. And so I had to learn how to transition this, um, you know, usually short, really focused, intense time into a longer drawn out time. And so I had to become more durable and I had to uh, pay more attention to my body. So in the off season, I really took care of myself. I really tried to reevaluate what are some areas that I can get better now um, so that I can be as strong as I possibly can and just in the best place for the upcoming season. The other thing that 
I always focused on is I am a passing outside hitter. And uh, as my contracts came in over the years, teams really hired me for my passing skills. And so I really put in a lot of time um, in the off season, uh, just getting a ton of passing reps in. And so I'd ask my family to help. I'd go find an open gym. I'd work some camps and then ask people to play with me in the summer. Um, it kind of was a whole conglomeration of people that really helped me improve over the summer because uh, sometimes that's really tough. Obviously, when I trained with the national team, that was most beneficial because I got to learn from a nutritionist and a sports psychologist and uh, weight training. So I definitely kept all of that with me and I've tried to continue to improve and continue to use all of those things that I learned um, during that time in the USA gym. So I'll tell you a little bit now about what I'm doing. I signed my contract on uh, yeah, in the first week of June. And so I've been working out, um, but not lifting super heavy. So now I'm lifting four days a week and making sure that I get some intervals in after lifting. Um, I do on Wednesdays, I do a much longer bike ride cardio session followed by some yoga. And my recovery includes lots of stretching and I have a sauna. So I'm taking taking time in that. I use my Normatec and my foam roller and all the bands that I've accumulated over the years. Um, so that's what a full week looks like for me. And I know that my leave date is somewhere near the middle of August. So once I signed my contract and found out the leave date, I worked backwards from there and tried to pull from all of the workouts that I have and just create the best uh, program moving forward. Uh, so that I can hopefully be as ready as I can when I'm ready to leave in August. Okay, lastly, I'm going to talk about how to stay healthy in body, mind, and soul. So it'll be a little bit of a review, I think, from some of the things I've talked about before because I've kind of touched on um, all of them. But I think this is really important and you really have to take ownership of it um, as a professional athlete especially going overseas and being a foreigner, you have to take pride in what you're doing and you have to own what you're doing. And so, um, okay, so first I'll go over how I take care of my body. So I think one of the most important things that I've learned is to uh, stretch and just take care of yourself. It's kind of funny, it sounds funny, but um, I have luckily been quite durable, knock on wood, and um, I would attribute that a lot to stretching. I think also when you stretch, it's a time that you can quiet your mind and you can go over practice and kind of review some things that how did it go? How do I feel? And by the time you're done stretching in 10 or 15 minutes, you're ready to leave it on the court and go home and do something totally different. So I think that that one's a little bit of a combination for me. The other one is to make sure you drink, drink tons of water. Um, my dad always says that the best canteen in the world is your body, and um, I really believe that that's so important to keep your body functioning at a, at a really high level. The other thing that I've done is to invest in recovery equipment. So like I said, I have uh, foam rollers, I've got bands, I've got uh, lacrosse balls, I've got a Normatec, I've got Hyperice uh, products. And so I think the most important thing is to invest in how you can best recover. And even if that just means your favorite water bottle so that you'll drink more water in the evening, um, I think those little things, those little tricks that you can uh, do really will help you in the long run. The other thing is I think you need to learn about your body and learn how to manage yourself. Um, especially coming out of college, uh, you are one people can become so dependent on a trainer and what they're telling them and if they're telling them that they're okay or they're telling them they're not okay. So. Um, that was something that it took several years for me to figure out was um, what is my body telling me? Um, do I have discomfort or do I have true pain? Um, and how do I manage that over an eight month season? Usually in three months, I could push through any kind of discomfort or pain. Um, but when you sign a contract and it's a full year thing, it needs to become a full lifestyle that you take care of yourself um, from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed to before trainings, to season, to post-season, all those types of things. So really spend some time um, getting to know yourself. And even if it helps you track, I did this, this, and this, and I feel better. I bought a, I bought a fitness watch and I like it because it tells me um, 
how many calories I burned or how my recovery is going or I'm using this app or, you know, there's so many things with technology these days that um, use those things and improve, try to improve each and every year and find something that um, you can fine tune. And so then you can be better for the upcoming season. For my mind, I uh, really spend some time just taking quiet time for myself and journaling. Um, I have a pretty type A personality and a lot of times when I get stressed, my mind just really starts to race. And so uh, I, find, I have found that if I put it down on paper, hence my notes, then I'll do a little bit better um, and won't be so stressed because I won't just have it all bottled up inside me. Uh, the other thing that goes back to having a schedule and completing daily tasks. So for me, that's controlling the things that I can control. I can wake up on time, I can make my bed, I can eat a good breakfast, I can take quiet time, I can check in with my family, um, and all of those things add up to a successful day, no matter how it went on and off the court. If you had a great day on the court, great, it goes even better. If you had a bad day on the court, you can learn from it and you can move on to the next day. Uh, another thing that I've found really beneficial is to learn about the culture that you're in and to really dive in and just um, immerse yourself in it and just enjoy being somewhere totally different. Um, my husband and I always talked about that you could do anything for a year and have found it really rich when we've learned from the locals or spent time with the locals on what's important to them or how they've grown up or how they deal with struggles. And so um, even really invest in your teammates, invest in people in your town uh, that can be really rich and a really um, fulfilling experience so finally um, your soul so I I think that the important part of this is to always strive to improve yourself in some way I think naturally athletes think about improving themselves on the court maybe even off the court like we talked about with the recovery um, but I've also found great joy in doing something creative so I always uh, pick a couple books that I'm going to read for a season. I really enjoy crocheting and knitting. So I usually uh, crochet a blanket when I'm overseas and then I leave it with a teammate. Um, I usually get some plants and take care of plants that live in my apartment for the eight or 10 months that I'm there. Um, and I just found that if I'm improving myself in, in other ways, then um, when my cup's full, I'm able to give to those around me a little bit more. So. I think it's really important to remember when you go overseas and you there's so much that you sacrifice for this sport that your your only value as a person is not in only in volleyball that you have so many other things to give and whether you dive into school or um, relationships or you know something creative that um, I just think it's really important to keep that life balance with um, with volleyball and with everything else. So yeah, I think that's all that I have uh, for you guys. Ryan said that he would funnel any questions that you have for me um, and I would be more than happy to answer them. Uh, hope that you've enjoyed learning from me a little bit and uh, please look me up and touch base with me. I'll be in Italy uh, in August. Good luck everyone.